Okay, humans. Now, uh, it turns out for some screwed up reason, I actually managed to uh, duplicate my sphere last time, and that's why there was no hole here, but now there is. So uh, now you see what exactly is happening here, right? If we go ahead and turn our vertex normals again, uh, you will see exactly my point when I was mentioning the whole, you know, extraction type deal. Uh, maybe I should just separate these. Uh, separate. There we go. So it would be something like this before, right? And then uh, once I separated it, it would be like this. Notice though that whether they're separated or not, if I go into my vertex normals for both of these objects, ah, uh, come on then. Okay. Notice that it has a similar picture. Now, obviously, I didn't align these correctly all the way, but uh, I hope you understand what my what I'm going through here. And this is exactly the same picture as when they were <clears throat> connected together, right? Uh, so this is what we're going to be doing now. I want to go into um, Painter as per our little diagram, right? Export something from Maya and dump it into Painter to see what it is. Now we're going to, like I said before, we're going to ignore the substance workflow here. We'll output a texture directly <clears throat> and just work with that uh, in Unreal. So. Uh, let's go ahead and create something that we can actually use as, you know, <clears throat> a, um, what's its face, um, an example. So I'm going to delete this, right? And uh, I'm going to go ahead and, by the way, before I, before I go any further, I just wanted to mention that you can take also a look at the tangents. And this is what I mean when we talk about, you know, calculating these things is that, you know, when I was trying to explain to you what a tangent is, I'm going to turn off the vertex normals, by the way, and you will see quickly how tangents are calculated. And this is essentially more, more prevalent on a sphere, <clears throat> like so. This way you see which, t which way the tangents are going. And once you calculate for that and the binormals, you actually have a full idea of, you know, which, you know, like which way is the point facing and what kind of uh, uh, tangents it's got as well. Anyway, I'm going to turn all this stuff off and I'm going to just delete this <clears throat> and we're going to create a, another sphere and this time we'll actually start working a little bit on it. Now what I'm going to do here really quick is essentially create a, something like a spinning top maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to turn on my um, soft select and maybe just increase the size of my brush a little bit, well not that much, maybe that mu this much and then just move this up a bit. Oh, yeah. Move this up like this. And then go into an edge mode, preferably without soft select. Or maybe with soft select, but just reduce the size of the brush. Maybe something like this. <clears throat> and then just scale it out. So it will be something like that. And uh, obviously we would need to accommodate for our little... Uh, set up here by just making this maybe a little bit bigger and just scaling inwards perhaps something like this no I don't like that um, okay what if we select this whole setup here and we just scale it down maybe something like this I suppose I don't know like this is sort of like a tabletop now this is a really quick and rough version obviously you know this is not a complete result maybe I should just go ahead and <clears throat> soft select this as well just lower the size of it and just you know reduce the size as well something like this this would probably pass as a tabletop at least and you know, on a more basic level type deal uh, I'm gonna slide this up just real easy like this or maybe not maybe I should just slide this up a little bit like so scale it up scale it down like this Right, this is something of a really quick create. Obviously not ideal. Now, I if I really wanted to go and get this done right, I would probably do something like, uh, <clears throat> you know, once I turn my soft select on, I would go into my uh, tool settings here and, uh, you know, I'd go into my soft selection and just play around with my fall off curve to get a, you know, particularly like a correct fall off curve. Obviously, I wouldn't want something, you know, starting over here and just being so gradual, but I'll have something of the sort of, uh, maybe something like this, 
right where I would just scale this down right or maybe even like this like a parable like this would be interesting you know but let's say okay let's say this is my uh, little um, tabletop here okay all right so this is a fairly simple model it's actually extremely simple right and this is what we're going to be working with when it comes to well let me just go ahead and just uh, maybe lower this as well a little bit like so something like this this creates a nice little um I wonder if I can talk about I can modify the soft select from here no there's no way quite unfortunate but um, I'm just gonna use the basic one at this stage even turn it off no need like this something like that okay so if we go ahead and turn on our um, like this is our table spin, tabletop spinning or whatever now if we go ahead and turn on our uh, soft selection, sorry, um, our uh, soft and hard edges, we should see some quite stark differences when it comes to, I'm gonna delete this as well. Uh, when it comes to our um, calculation, as you can see right now, this is definitely a, uh, a soft edge right now. And as you can see, this is a easily reflected on top of our lighting, which has trouble being calculated. Now, if I go ahead and uh, just select this, I'm going to my edge mode and simply toggle my soft and hard edge display. Maybe I could even go into my display here. I believe it is possible to use, I'm going to pop this out, to use a, uh, let me see here, hard edges for color. No. I just use soft hard edges. Very simple. I'm going to do it like that. <clears throat> and um, let's go ahead and change this to a hard edge. Okay. In fact, what we're going to do right now is we're going to have several versions of the same um, table uh, tabletop and just see what the difference uh, the differences are once we import that into a painter and then create a uh, normal map. Now, if you remember correctly, when I was explaining about what the normal map does and how it works, is the fact that you need a high poly mesh. Generally speaking, now it's possible to create a normal map without a high poly mesh but most of the time you would want something in order to add the detail that is needed. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm essentially going to put this at, what is it, zero, zero, zero. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to isolate my duplicate. So I'm working on the duplicate right now. And uh, we don't really need to worry about soft or hard edges in this case, uh, because frankly we don't, but there's one very simple and fast way to set up a soft hard edge is basically by adding a soft and hard, uh, soft and harden and simply this will create a particular um, edge selection like if in this case I hardened it but that was because I believe in my angle I set it up to zero which by default should be by 30 and this will create a nice smooth curvature and just you know sort of uh, <clears throat> fix things out for us so I'm just gonna leave this here for as an example it's not a necessity um, I'm gonna delete the history on this anyway I believe I had a shortcut for it uh, delete by type, Alt Shift D. That's what my thing is. Alt Shift D. There we go. Okay. So now that I've deleted the uh, thingy, I think it's time we uh, subdivide this uh, sucker. So I'm gonna go ahead and smooth this and just give it a couple of iterations, like four. Well, four is a little bit much. Three, I suppose. I don't know. We, or maybe you know what? We should just we should just smooth this guy and uh, work with the divisions this way something like this yeah something like this now ideally obviously this would be a uh, subdivision proxy by the way which will allow you to crease a lot of these um, well how should I say uh, this will allow you to crease to crease a lot of the um, you know selections here so that they work properly all right but we're not gonna do that right now because you know who gives a shit right now for about the proper um, shape of this ideally like I said you do want to crease these before you actually um, you know apply this so in this case since we're not working with a uh, since we're not working with a um, uh, you know uh, smooth proxy right we could, we could just crease these as we go so let's say I'm gonna select this and I'm just gonna go ahead and crease this in fact no never mind I'm gonna select I'm gonna select this and this 
and this and this and all my hard edges basically there's uh, by the way there is a um, a selection constraint here if you really want to you can go into select and you can select uh, let's see where was it I believe it was constraints use constraints so you could use a constraint but where was the setup for the constraints Uh, usually there should be like a, when it goes to use constraints, it should, oh, okay, they change it. It used to be like on the side here, you could select. So you can go ahead and say, well, I want to, I want to select, um, let's say all my hard, my hard uh, edges. So you could just click on hard and then, you know, decide to um, selection boundary or close and remember so that next time you use this, um, you know, uh, next time you use this, this is available to you. But I'm not going to bother because I really have almost nothing here to uh, use. And now that I have this, I'm just going to go ahead and crease this. Now they're creased. Now I'm going to go and uh, ideally you'd probably want to go ahead and create a subdivision proxy on the side, right? And just increase the, um, you know, increase the exponentials on it like this. So this got, I don't know how many freaking polygons it's got. But, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter in this case whether I did this from here or from here. Uh, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> delete all the history anyway on it because, like I said, this is just a test. Um, obviously, now any further subdivisions will still work because I still got my creases available to me. And this is fairly similar to the original, uh, to the result, right, to the original thing. So if I go ahead and turn this on, let me just go ahead and take a look. Yeah, they're fairly close in terms of, uh, in terms of their... Uh, shape, of course, so there's way more definition on, on the other object. Now, I'm not going to go into these layers or, you know, try to add transparency because at the end of the day, this is just a test. And uh, maybe I should have subdivided this one more time. I'm going to go ahead and subdivide this one more time. Okay, this is going to take a while. There we go. That's one. Um... Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of faces for such a small thing. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and add another subdivision. So I have subdivided by two. This will add quite a lot of faces. Uh, so I got a million and a half faces, which is a fairly decent amount. But this, uh, this gives me a really high resolution to my object. And now I can actually add some detail, um, you know, using sculpting, for example. So if I go ahead and use my uh, sculpting tool, would be nice. If I can get to it, where was my sculpting tool? Oh, there it is. So I got my sculpting tool, and now I've got... I should have probably deleted the history on this guy. Yeah, my froze. Okay, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to delete the history on this thing really quick. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to go back into the same tool, and we can actually start to sculpt. Now, in this case, I'm simply going to use wax if i can find the wax there we go i'm going to use the wax here uh obviously i could use uh you know a symmetry for for this one but you know who cares uh i can't be bothered with it right now so i'm going to go into my tool settings here and i'm going to choose a stylus sorry a stamp um stylus my bad so i'm going to use a stamp and which image am i going to use and i'm going to just click pick stamp from the available stamps and what should we add as a thing now generally you should be able to use these at least in Mudbox you can they automatically you know turn into grayscale uh, but let's say you want to we want to use mud cracks or I don't know I don't know what yellow chip rust um, <clears throat> I think these will work by the way in, in Maya as well let's give it a shot I should be able to add them if I increase the uh, there we go so it works uh, but let's try something different let's say we want some um, Bristol whatever Bristol is uh, let's just increase the size of our brush and just add some Bristol yeah I like this uh, unfortunately unlike in Mudbox where you have variation you can have like ro a random rotation I don't think it's yeah, you can randomize here as well right that's good that's good but you have very little controls based you know 
compared to the thing. But let's say I'm just going to be adding this like so. There we go. I'm just adding some random stuff in terms of depth, right? This is a damaged, this is a damaged, um, you can also, uh, you know, you can actually vary it in size. So you can randomize the scale as well. That's pretty cool. It should be randomizing it fairly well. Right, at the bottom as well, you want to have some kind of wear and tear here where it's inwards or outwards. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, plenty of... Uh, stuff now you can obviously go negative as well if you wanted to i think you could if you really desired to oops magnitude no well you can't go negative oh sorry yeah you can i forgot that it just had to be control jesus what am i doing okay so let's just say i want to do the control bit and then i need to smooth this around maybe a little bit just using shift again just nothing fancy, very simple. Now Maya is starting to tank based on this. Unfortunately, it's unavoidable, so there's some kind of damage here. Um, maybe I need to just make this a little bit more convincing. Just add something like a huge thing on this side and then just maybe loads of stuff on this side or maybe I just could pick up something else such as, I don't know, dirt. Just keep adding dirt to it, all sorts of dirt. Well, this is a <laughs> this is going to be quite interesting, but this is a very extreme example now in this case because this is a very different, um, it's much different in shape, much more different in shape than um, than our original object. So our bake is going to be pretty shit. Uh, so we don't want that. Uh, I'm going to reduce the size here. I'm just going to add a little bit of this there. Now, this obviously does not look anywhere realistic because of the way it crosses, but hey, uh, we could always just uh, work with this. For, for some screwed up reason though, I initially have really good dents here. Oh, these are not dents. They're just sticking out. Well, I do have some dents. And why don't I have these dents from here? Or are they all sticking out? Okay, okay. So there's no way to randomize inwards or outwards, I believe. It's always a press. You can't just, you have to hold control to have it opposite. You can't random, randomize the control shift bit. But, uh, you know, this is just damage here. And this is basically as much detailing as I intend to put here because... Uh, Look, it's just a an example um, type project, so I, I don't really care about the you know the av average um, state of my model. Okay, so now that we have that, which is our high poly model, and maybe I should have actually saved this stuff to a particular um, project instead of just starting anew. But uh, let's just say that this is our final uh, model. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this other one. I'm gonna show this. Uh, if I can select it, do I really need to open the outliner now? Okay, um, this sphere, I'm just gonna hide it. Oh, there's a hidden sphere from somewhere else. I didn't even know I had this. So I'm gonna delete this. And I'm gonna hide this sphere. No, hide this sphere. Oh, this sphere is, this is just left over. Okay, it must be that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I need to probably just drag this out as well because you know it's not needed. I'm gonna delete this. No need for that. And I'm gonna hide this. There we go. And I'm actually gonna rename this as I'm while I'm at it. So we got top low and you've got top high. Now this is a fairly simple uh, setup, right? And we need to actually talk about now about exporting this stuff because I'm going to create several uh, different versions of the same file. Yeah. Uh, now, whenever you're baking stuff, right? Um, like in uh, in Painter, for example, if you have several different versions of the same thing, but you want to keep it as the low. Now, remember, Painter uh, uses a suffix here and instead of having your stuff to be blown up you just use a different suffix uh and uh as long as it's hashtag like as long as it's uh like underscore low or high or whatever it is you've set it up in the settings menu then uh, that's the stuff that's going to be used for the bake okay so i'm going to just uh, duplicate this guy one uh two three times 
yeah, I think three times is fair. So uh, I'm just going to hide all, both like these three for now because we're going to be working on this basic one. And uh, this will be our proper setup. So I'm going to hide this one and open up the low bit. Now here, we will just leave it the way this is like that, right? Um, and we're going to have to take a look at our UV. So I'm going to open up the UV editor. Notice that our UV editor has almost like he's like, basically has nothing to do almost nothing to do with our shape because this originally was a um, a sphere and right now it is definitely not a sphere okay so uh, I'm just gonna keep it the way this is right now and uh, this is low one but in order to work we need to actually go ahead and say this is low uh, a base I suppose this is like the basic thing that's like not modified at all <clears throat> then we're going to create, we're going to hide this now. I'm going to create a low over here. And I will re, uh, I will just reapply some of the, uh, you know, default stuff such as the uh, smoothing groups. So I'm going to go ahead and cr uh, create our little smoothing groups, soft and hard. And, and Jesus Christ, why is the default so bad? All right, we're going to have to do this the hard way. Oh, that's why it's so bad. 30. Oh, edit. Reset settings. Well, it's at 30, so. Uh, soft and harden right there we go this is solid stuff so now we've softened it and hardened it but our UVs do not represent anywhere nearly as like we don't we our UVs are shit basically right now right so I'm just gonna say that this is top low and it is crap UV crap UVs and now I'm gonna hide this one and release this one <clears throat> I'm gonna keep the soft edges and I will create a cut. Uh, basically, I will UV this thing separately now. Uh, but because we're not really gonna have any um, any hard edges on it, uh, I basically have three rain, free rain. So I'm just gonna go and create an automatic UV. Uh, maybe if I go ahead like this and I just simply go into my... Can I just go ahead and just do this automatically? Automatic, there we go. I wonder if there's a setup. Well, I don't care. Just just automatic. Okay, there's there's your automatic. So it's uh, did whatever it is thought is best. And, you know, it did something. Let me see here real quick. Ah, it sort of looks all right. You know, it'll get the job done. <clears throat> Not the perfect setup, but hey, better than nothing. So I'm going to leave this the way that it, the way this is, you know, the way it is right now. And you shouldn't see any problems. So I'm going to go ahead and name this top low uh, what's its face <clears throat> automatic I'll just keep it at auto and then what else do we have we got the uh, we've got the base we've got the crap UVs we've got the auto and um, just to show you the well we need one more no, do we we need one more uh, so I'm going to just duplicate this one more time. I'm going to hide this and I'm going to say this is auto with bad edges. Okay, so this we're going to be adding some hard edges where there are no seams. And as you can see over here, we can even turn on the color gradient here if we really wanted to. What is it? What was it again? Shift light. No, 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 I don't want what, what I just want. Where's my color stuff? Yeah, using multicolor. There we go. So uh, as you can see, we don't have any cuts over here. So this is exactly when I'm going to put a hard edge. And it's almost close enough to be hard, right? So I'm going to put one right over here. And I'm going to say, harden this edge. And then I'm going to grab another one over here, which is going across multiple different uh, seams. I'm going to harden this one as well, right? And I'm going to harden one over here. I just repeated the command, by the way, so if you were you know, wondering about that. All right, so um, yeah, let's have another one over here. You know, if we're going to do this, we got to do it all the way. So as you can see, we've got a little setup here. Uh, and now we're going to do, you know, the, the real thing, you know, like properly. Okay, so I'm going to hide this 
I'm gonna leave. Actually, maybe should maybe we should do everything else first so that you see why we'll be doing what we're doing for, to this particular piece of geometry. Yeah, I think it's only fair that we do that. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna do exactly that. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and export all of these. And I'm gonna go ahead and say file export selection. FBX export. I wonder if it's going to export them separately or just in one full FBX. They will export them separately. Ah, god damn it, man. Now I'm going to have to do this the most annoying way. I think there was a sort of a setting here, which was the, um, the game exporter, was it? Yes, it is the game exporter. Uh, I don't want to group them. How many groups? I wonder if I could export them. Now this will actually export. Export object set. This should give us. Although I would, I don't have any selection sets. Export the selection. This will give me. This will give me one big. Okay, export to multiple files. Okay, okay, okay. That's great. Uh, now, by the way, when you're doing this, it's important that all your stuff is in, uh, in the origin, all right? And generally speaking, actually, before I do that, I should delete the history on all the history on all of these. So I'm going to delete that history on all of these, okay? And now maybe I can unhide them. There we go. That's because we got the hide. That's why it takes so long to to do this stuff. But uh, let's go back into the export. Uh, setup. So again, we got the uh, export selection. We want our smoothing groups. We don't want our tangents and binomials. We don't have any blend shapes. We don't need the skinning because there's no skeleton. Um, we're going to export to multiple files. We're going to move to origin. No need though because we already have that. Um, no animation. We don't have any input connections. We don't need them either. Uh, up axis is Z. We don't have to embed any media, if any. Um, now, obviously, if we were to go into Unreal, we would have to go for the FBX that is, you know, most recently supported. I believe it's 2016, 2017. But we got FBX 20, you know, 2018. Obviously, you got some settings here if you really want to go into, um, you know, to the basic advanced stuff. Like if you want to embed cameras, lights, uh, which is, you know, a legitimate reason if you don't want any of that stuff over here. For example, we don't want any skeleton definitions because we got none, no cameras, no lights. Uh, we don't have any children, so no need for that, right? You, you could just play around with some of these settings, but I'm going to leave this in default, and I'm going to go ahead and export this in the desktop, like every self-respecting computer user, because this is essentially, you know, a throwaway thing. I'm going to choose this directory here, and I'm going to say multi-file prefix. Oh, I don't know. Just export this stuff, will ya? Ah, yes, of course, there's that as well. God damn it. Yeah, there's a, there's a problem with this uh, thing, and that is because uh, Maya LT has a limit on actually, like on actual um, polygon count. So 250K is the max, unless you send it to Unreal. So I need to go ahead and now set up a project set unreal project and i need to go to my desktop and i'm going to say this is my test project here i'm going to select this oh god i need to create an unreal okay i'm just going to go ahead and select the uh i'm going to go ahead and select the uh what's its face i believe we had our projects over here and uh Oh my bad, my bad. Wrong, wrong thing. Game development, fit space, worms, volleyball. Yeah. So we're gonna select this. This is the project, and now we're gonna have to export this stuff over here. All right. We're gonna select this and uh, export it uh, using the game exporter because it allows for multiple, uh, you know, file exportions. We already have every everything set up correctly. I'm gonna export this stuff. There we go, export successful. And just double check this. Excellent, each one has their own FBX, but now we're gonna have to go ahead and sidestep this 
by essentially exporting the um, the top high and I'm gonna send it to Unreal which let's just confirm that our project is okay let's just I, I, let's just hope that it's there all right so I'm gonna send this to Unreal send the selection to Unreal it's gonna take a while I will even he'll even ask me where to put it in and how to name it all right well that's great so I'm gonna say that this is and remember this is our worm low one we had we haven't exported a high poly yet uh, anyway I'm gonna say this is our what was it top underscore high it's like whoa, whoa, whoa low low uh, this is a case sensitive so all right smoothing groups no need to I we should have triangulated this sucker totally forgot to triangulate this sucker all right that's fine look I think it'll still work you know no biggie that would be nice if I did triangulate it whatever well I don't need to triangulate the high poly but still I should have triangulated the old ones uh, anyway I'm gonna export this over here right and then I'm gonna go ahead and oh god this is gonna take a while isn't it and then I'm gonna re-export these guys I'm just gonna delete these and I'm gonna re-export these guys triangulated I think it's possible to triangulate them anyway what happened now are you did you did you seriously just Jesus Christ man let's go uh, where's my triangulation there it is I'm gonna triangulate this and now I'm gonna export export successful Excellent, we got everything set up. Now I need to go ahead and find my imports. There it is, top high. I'm just gonna cut this out because I don't need it here. And I'm gonna put this over here. Now this is our complete setup. This is basically what you'd be doing. Ideally, obviously you won't be doing this, but you'd be having one high and one low, which low you will we'll be actually talking about that low once we start working on it in order to fix it, all right? So I'm gonna minimize this sucker. I uh, probably should just close this. Uh, minimize this because we're gonna need it I'm gonna minimize this whole story and we're gonna open up our substance painter this will probably give me still the warning because I didn't restart my computer oh no okay worked out <sighs> look I can't be arsed right now all right uh, let me just close this out now Welcome to Painter, right? Basically, I'm sorry, I forgot to go uh, through the uh, menus, but look, we're going to go through most of this stuff later down the line. Uh, but essentially what you need to understand, this is a lot like um, Photoshop in terms of its functionality. You got a layers uh, tab over here. It does exactly the same thing as it does in Photoshop and exactly the same thing as it does in Maya. You got a texture set list, which we will be talking about. You got a property set and obviously you got like a bunch of settings here for the viewer for the display etc uh there's some pretty self-explanatory shortcuts uh but you know not like some of them are unique to um you know to uh painter but uh look you can even export into photoshop and all, all sorts of other stuff you can even have your uh, substance live which is very handy tool like here substance source sorry so a substance source for painter is you know the stuff that i was talking about you could actually get them you know uh you know for use so you can get your brick wall uh, you know these are some default stuff and they have a lot of um, variability because these are substances you can just you know generate more and more stuff like trampled sand sand smooth with ripples like look at how much sand they've got right anyway I'm just getting uh, sidetracked here so uh, let me go ahead and open up a new um, uh, you know new project which is like a project in substance is essentially a mesh but uh, look I'm not gonna go through these settings right now because I just wanna illustrate something and then when we start actually working on this like on the uh, on the worm and prepare the worm then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you know explain how this whole situation operates here because it while it's not a lot it definitely deserves deserves its own video so I shouldn't be just glancing over it like this all right so I'm just going to select an Unreal Engine 4 template and I'm going to go ahead and select a, where did it go? Desktop, is it not? Test. There we go. 
All right, so um, we've got this uh, low auto. Uh, well, first we need to use the base, I believe, which is the most basic type of thing, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and um, documentation resolution be like, uh, let's leave it at 2K, let's go high resolution. We're gonna be 2Kng in this. I'm gonna go ahead and press OK, and this should load up my mesh. Now, as you can see over here, I've got, uh, Oops, I'm not, I should be painting. I've got basically quite a lot of, uh, and by the way, when you hold something here, you can actually see what's it gonna do, right? So these are your shortcuts. So if you ever need, uh, you know, either, if you ever need to uh, uh, check something out, when you press something, it will show you here. Um, so as you can see, we've got our little piece of geometry here. Now what we need to do is we're gonna add some, um, how should I say it? Uh, detail onto it right this is a fairly low detail object so we don't really we need to that's that's why we have a high poly object now first and foremost i'm going to go ahead and delete this layer really quick and let me just see i believe there was a way to glide this now what was the way to uh i don't want to rotate envi environment Oh yeah, I do want to rotate the environment. That's what I want. So obviously with shift right mouse button, sorry, I'm, I'm getting a bit of confused between the two um, software packages and Unreal and all that. But with right mouse, shift mouse button, right mouse button, you can actually rotate your light source. All right. And here in the viewer settings, by the way, you can even have your little environmental opacity, just bump it up so you, you can see a little bit better. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to bake a normal map for this guy, right? So uh, let me just maybe put this down a little bit so we can see better. And I'm gonna go ahead and just bake something out of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and bake textures. And here I will select, see my high poly mesh suffix is high, my low poly mesh suffix is low. And uh, before I bake something, let's just take a look at what our setup is. By the way, I, wish I should have done that earlier. Uh, maybe I should just give it some wood let's say this is a wooden material i'm not gonna add this is a substance right this is not what we want we want a material and we're just gonna add a material over here now this is our wooden material you could say oh gee this looks pretty good doesn't it well yeah sort of but then uh you know this is all soft edges right so if you can see as you can see over here if we unhide top base our uh you know our edges don't really look that good right we got over here our edges they're all soft we do have a problem with that right and you will see another another reason why is that especially once we start baking the map right so let's go ahead and bake our map I'm gonna just disable this so we have a better look at this and this looks sort of alright let's bake some textures uh, let's go ahead and select a high definition mesh this would be our top high in this case in, in this case uh, we shouldn't, we're not going to be using a cage, just leave everything at default. Anti-aliasing, like the more obvious, the, the bigger one, the more anti-aliasing you have, the more correct of a bake you got. So let's go ahead for, let's go ahead and use 4x4. Four four. I'm not going to go gung-ho, maybe just 2x2, two two, right? We don't have much details here. Uh, I'm going to disable all of them, except the normal map, because that's the, what we need. And I will use my baking which will take a little bit, hopefully. Maybe a little bit longer, there we go. Now, as you can see, we've got our details in this, uh, you know, in this manner. If we take a look at our map as well, where's my normal, there we go. So if we take a look at our normal map, you'll see that we have quite the difference. Now, obviously the normal map, unlike a bump map, by the way, uh, okay, we're not gonna talk about this, but it has to do with resolution. A bump map, uh, you know, does not affect light. Normal map does because of the color. I'm gonna talk about color another time, but a bump map is grayscale, meaning that's got only one value, it's 8-bit. This is sRGB, meaning it's got more information in it, allowing light to be calculated based on that map. So if, if we go ahead and, uh, Where's my normal? There we go, material. So uh, if we can see here, this actually light is being calculated based on uh, the way 
the geometry works, right? You can see the shadows moving left and right. This is mi mostly because of the normal map. If this was a bump map, you know, it wouldn't be the same result. But anyway, I'm going a little bit too deep onto this. Uh, so I wanted to take a look at my, um, where's my thing? Jeez, I forgot how to use this sucker. There we go. F that's F1, I'm sorry. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at F1, which is our normal map, uh, this does look a little bit messy, right? Sorry, our UV map, this looks a little bit messy because there's not a lot of um, consistency here. We do have some issues over on this side, as you can see. Um, not very good definition, and the light is just doing something weird. But, you know, it's an acceptable result, and you could be happy with this, with the, maybe with the exception of here. You can see that we got some, you know, very serious artifacts. Like, this is, does not look good at all, right? And that's because of the uh, softness of our edges, okay? These edges are soft, and things do not look great at all. And perhaps we have a similar issue on this side, do we? Uh, some issues on this side inside of it, and then we've got definitely a lot of issues over here. But this is obviously a fact that you got a pole over here, and we did not we did not address this in any of our um, uh, models here because uh, you know I already told you how to how to fix poles and why they're you know problematic. Uh, obviously, not to mention the fact that our high poly has a lot more stuff going on for it here. Okay. And that's why, in general, by the way, you'd want to have, uh, you know, your high poly stuff modeled in uh, in mud box for the same reason that it just creates primitives already quad capped, right? Your your sphere is actually fully quads, no, no, like the whole software works only with quads, right? Nothing else. Anyway, that being said, if we turn on the, uh, you know, if you turn on the, uh, let's say the material here, you actually see the problems here right on it. Now a lot of players will not give two shits about this and neither probably should you in this particular case because if it's a tabletop it's like nobody's gonna care alright now this does look a little bit ugly though not only because of the way I've painted the uh, you know the detail on it but also because of the bake and you know the rest of this stuff is kinda crap as well okay uh, so I'm definitely not happy with the way this looks and uh, with as much better improvement you can take a look by the way at the normal map here uh, if there are any issues and the bake is technically all right maybe here we got a little bit of a problem you know maybe quite a lot of problems but this is due to the bake okay uh, so um, we should in in inspect a different sort of setup so let's go ahead and take a look at a new project and we're gonna use I'm gonna discard this one and I'm gonna select another mesh this time we're gonna select the mesh with auto UVs no, sorry, crash mesh low crap UVs. Which one was the second one we did? Yeah, crap UVs. I'm gonna select the mesh crap UVs. I'm gonna open this, and uh, I'm gonna hide this guy. I'm gonna open up our crap UV mesh. So, uh, what's the problem with this? If we take a look at our UVs, this is essentially properly, um, this is properly uh, hard edged, but we're gonna have a problem when it comes to our um, our UVs because our UVs really don't look that good. We've got a lot of problems. Uh, so let's go ahead and bake another set here. So I'm gonna select normal map or bake textures here. And I'm gonna select none and just bake the normal. Uh, you know, going with the same parameters using the top high. Um, just going. Let's go sub sampling times eight. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Just no four by four. Four by four seems fine. So this is gonna take a little bit. The normal map usually takes the longest to bake. And we should see results fairly soon. There we go. Now this is this is looking a little bit better, right? A little bit better, right? Our 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 edges are much better defined over here because they're hard. But we're having a lot of tear and wear and tear over here for the same reason that I'm just gonna deselect this because I don't want to paint here. Uh, we have a lot of like have a seam over here due to the simple fact that there's a hard edge but no UV split, there's no UV cuts. So you can, you'll be having these issues all the time. Not only that, but if you take a look at this side over here, there's definitely some kind of splitting going on, even though technically there's nothing over here. So if this was a razor's blade or something, it would look pretty shitty, right? And uh, if you turn on, let's say we add the wood material, we add this uh, material, we add this material, um, 
this will look slightly better right but the more we start adding detail the more of an issue we're gonna have over here on these things now you might say jesus all you got to do is just change the projection from uh, from linear to triplanar maybe this will fix it somewhat but you still have some issues and that's mainly due to the fact that your uvs are garbage usually triplanar fixes that all right and even if you got like uh like sharp to sharpen this up instead of being, having a high quality is still not going to be having that much of a result uh now i believe there was uh, an actual filter where you could go for advanced triplanar right um uh, let me just see here okay let me just see here real quick um advanced triplanar all right there we go so if i go ahead and add an advanced triplanar to this i should have maybe added this to this thing uh go ahead advanced triplanar okay this is much better he's gonna delete he's gonna delete this thing so in the advanced triplanar over here let's say i have my uh projection based on i don't know my x only and i'm gonna say this is advanced and i'm gonna say that i want the x-axis well i need oh yeah i don't have my space no i need to bake more maps for this look the point is okay the point is that you've got a problem here that you need to fix and that only the only way to fix this problem is by having proper uv maps and this is not a proper uv uv map take a look at this mess right does that look in any way shape or form resemble to you a good quality projection or a texture right i've never seen a texture like that in a game like never and I've opened up plenty of textures for games. So you can imagine that this is not what you want. So you need to avoid that. All right. Now, that being said, you could fool most people with this. All right. You could fool them. You really could. Because there's, if this is so far away at the back, nobody's going to give two shits about it. But if you follow the same work ethic as you do here, and you, you know, uh, apply this work ethic to a big character who would take up most of the screen things will be definitely noticeable and it will scream of incompetence and basically a lack of effort all right so you really don't want to be having this you want to have a much cleaner uv all right now that being said we can go on to our next subject by the way let's notice what we got over here now this is actually an issue not only due to the shitty uvs but also due to the projection itself you know the normal map baking we do have some problems with the normal map over here but they're much more exaggerated as you can see here this because there's a hard edges but there's no uv splits this is a much more exaggerated problem whereas in the soft edge there was you know there, there was a lot of gradiency over here so you can see the gradients but it wasn't that uh, obvious same thing for the sides over here there was a greenish a greenish gradient if i turn this off there was a greenish gradient there's something there was something here okay there was some kind of gradient now there's nothing uh, there was uh, some kind of grain in here and now there is nothing all right uh definitely not a good way to go and obviously you've got this as well which is the result of you know a, a shitty um a shitty topology so that's why you need also important that's why it's important to have good topology all right anyway that being said we need to uh you know move along here with pretty uh a pretty good pace so i'm going to discard this and we're going to create another one and we're going to use the auto with the bad which one sorry regular auto okay so i'm going to use the regular auto i'm going to create this and uh immediately we should see some improvement but i believe this auto had pretty shitty edges i believe was it not yeah this was just the auto with the soft edges so in this case we have some kind of uvs which you know kind of you know, these uvs are shit but they're much better than the previous set of uvs all right so it's it's much much better in terms of uh, what output should we get so i'm gonna go ahead and bake this one more time actually before we do it just take a look here at what we have now this is not much this is not too dissimilar to what we've got can we just delete this thank you um i'm gonna just use wood again we're going to use the same wood just to stay consistent now notice here that we still have this light here this is the gradient and it looks like we could get a better bake only not only because of the uvs which are over here and we're going to get a much better bake because of that 
but also because um, you know because uh, this is just a much cleaner UV uh, split out right we do have some problems over here by the way not enough geometry sorry not enough topology not to mention that it's just look it's just pretty shit right let's just bake a couple of textures and see what happens uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bake using the same parameters like I said top high and I will be using a 4x4 did I use a 4x4 on the first time? I think I used a 2x2. Two two. Now you could make the case that, yeah, if I used a 4x4, four four, it would be so much better than the 2x2 two two in terms of the bake. But that's not true, right? You, you know, you, you, that's, that's, that's just total drivel. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got here. Now this looks a little bit, like, I don't know, this looks a little bit better, but I don't know. It, it, it's, not a, it's not as good as it could have been. There's still an issue over here. If we go ahead and take a look at our gradients, as you can see, there's a massive difference between between the hard edges and the soft edges. So the soft edges are very important. They essentially define how light, and because normal map actually defines how the light works, if you take a look at the normal map, this stuff is just, you know, curvature and light and all that information is here, right? Uh, so anything that is, um, you know, incorrectly, even like take a look over here, what we've got. Like, what is this? All right, this is, this is a problem inside our normal map. We shouldn't be having this. And that's another reason why you want clean UVs. You can actually see the normal map seams over here. You can see the actual normal map right over here. I think this is the, which seams are we looking at right now? If I go into face mode, I'll probably find out. All right, let's go into face mode. Uh, what was it? Projection, polygon, fill. What if I selected this? Oh, I need to actually create. Okay, I'm not gonna bother with the layer and selecting these things just so that we can test a couple of stuff. Okay, it actually lets me create a paint layer. Now I should be able to have a polygon fill. Now if I go ahead and select this stuff, right, there's my selection set. And now I go ahead and put this on. And I'm gonna take a look at this. Which faces did I just select? No idea. Oh, I'm filling them already. I just want to select them, dude. Wait, no, no, no. Is that does that thing even let me select stuff? I have to recheck. I'm gonna delete this. Delete, 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 delete. delete. Even like even here, you can see there's a massive difference. Not only because actually another another issue here is the fact that they're turned sideways. Okay, that is also a problem. I'm gonna delete this guy uh, because if we take a look. That's why we have issues. If we go ahead and add a wooden, look what happens. Okay, this is a really, really bad uh, UV texture. Okay, now look, that's not to say, that's not to say that if I start painting something over here, I will have a seam, all right? Like, painter is smart enough to paint appropriately across these seams. So, essentially, what I'm going to do is let's say I just uh, delete this layer. Let's say I want to paint something across here. I'm just going to create a paint layer and I'm going to use uh, just a regular paintbrush and I'm going to use, I don't know, which color, what, what am I going to use? What am I going to use? Uh, color. I want to use some color. Uh, but, pff, no, I don't want to paint any height. No, 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 no. I don't want no height, no, no metal, nothing. I just want the color, right? Base color. I'm going to say I'm going to paint with red. So if I paint with red, well, this is not exactly a good idea of orientation, right? I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna paint with wood. If I can paint with wood, can I? All right. Let me paint with wood, please. There we go. Okay, so I'm painting with wood. Now let's see what's gonna happen if I paint with wood. See, this works. This works because I am actually, even though even though this is like fucked up beyond belief in terms of um, in terms of orientation of our textures because I'm painting this by hand this can actually work okay and uh, which is which is great right if I make this even bigger and I can say well you know I just want to paint across this and you will not see the seam that is only because I'm doing this by hand but this means that anything I do if I decide to just stick to this where's my thing oops sorry way to go uh, if I decide to stick to this uh, setup over here, that I essentially forfeit my ability, right, to to um, 
to procedurally fill stuff here. So that's definitely not what definitely not what you want. And um, this is going to be obviously a problem later down the line if you decide to have something moving or let's say some blood splattering because if you splatter the blood, it's not really going to look that good. Okay, so I'm going to delete this layer right now as it is. Please. Thank you. And uh, I think that's all from this shitty bit. Right. So now what we want to do is I want to take this shitty bit and I'm going to import the bad edges as well. So you notice what happens there with the bad edges. This is just with the um, this is just with the uh, soft edges. Right. Everything is soft here. Right. Now I'm going to import the bad ones. I'm going to go ahead and create new again and I'm going to change the mesh to auto bad edges. OK. Auto with bad edges okay uh, let's go ahead and take a look what we've got well we've got some hard edges over here and already you can tell that you're gonna have a really shitty bake okay there's not much you just piss off now before I bake this let's go ahead and put a wooden texture wooden texture over here already this looks like shit okay let's face it this is a really shitty UV set right this these are UVs there's nothing we can do about it. it's gonna look like it's gonna look bad all right but that being said, notice our hard edges, right? There is no UV seam here. Remember, there is no UV seam here, but there is a hard edge. So if I go ahead and just hide this and open our bad edges, the only thing we're th that's different here is that this is a hard edge. That's all. There's nothing else. This is the only difference that is between, you know, these two um, um, uh, meshes, okay? So you, could, you can clearly see that the, there's a massive improvement when, you know, if, if you decide, if you use these things correctly. Now, I, I think this video is becoming long enough, so I'm not going to, uh, you know, fix this, uh, you know, top low right now and, uh, you know, probably do this tomorrow because it's, it's just uh, my mouth is getting dry. I'm starting to die over here. Uh, but I wanted to just make one final point here. This is, this is going to be the most stark example of the the shittiest possible job you could do at exporting or importing a uh, an asset okay barring some ridiculous topology of course you know i could just add some n-gons over here which technically would work but i don't need them in this particular case there's no place where i could need an n-gon with the possible exception of the top right I, I, I could i could get away with an n-gon at the top if i decide to make it flat if I have to make it pointy, then, you know, tough shit. I'm going to have to quad cap this or whatever floats, whatever works for me. All right. Or if it's really that d difficult to see, I obviously will ignore it. But let's go ahead and bake our little uh, map over here and see what happens. Now, if you remember the video I made on the UVs, essentially, I explained how a map is baked there, by the way. Uh, what you have is you have your high poly object, which is our top, top high with 1.5 million polygons by the way and um let's say i go ahead and essentially i'm gonna select this by the way to be with a four by four so nobody bitches actually no i'm gonna go and make this eight by eight this is this this will be the highest resolution bake we have so far and i have the shittiest conditions and let's take a look at what we can get but anyway the point is that this creates a cage a uh okay let me just show you here uh, this creates a cage around it, which is uh, very small, very tiny. So this would be something like that. This is our height. And it will literally be like these are inside each other. And whatever is sticking out of here, as you can see, there's something sticking out of here. There's a ray projected into the geometry. And this gets flattened onto an image. Okay. And this image actually carries not only the actual geometry here. Look at this geometry that's popping out, right? the image is carrying not only the geometry definition but also it's carrying the light the way light will be reflected across you know this surface over here if you projected said light right that's why you need these things to be zeroed in, uh, in like at the origin of your world so that both of them can be projected at the same time all right that being said let's just do the damn bake already right so i'm baking this oh god not again just use the fucking thing like this yeah we got top uh, we're going to use an 8 by 8 uh, Just use the high and low nomenclature. I used to use a high and low before, but I was trying to figure out if, if there was a way to set this to a default in a different way because I have a different uh, setup where I use, uh, you know, like uh, I use high 
and low instead of just I just find it faster to type but whatever uh, anyway I'm gonna I'm gonna bake this now at the highest possible re resolution um, and we'll see the results let's see what we can get with this marvelous example of geometry see it takes significantly longer amount of time to bake the damn thing at eight by eight now normal maps is the hardest one to bake the rest is easy to bake maybe with the exception of ambient occlusion but AO is uh, usually the, you, can, you can derive AO from the normal uh, or you can bake it separately I don't know which one does which one painter does I think it bakes it separately but whatever so let's take a look what we've got uh, eight by eight remember super sample well subsampled idea anti-aliased uh, so uh, we have the most possible definition. We definitely do have quite a lot of definition. Now I could increase the uh, size of our uh, little, uh, uh, you know, normal map here. I believe there was a way to set this up. Jeez, it's been a while since I used this freaking. Uh, let's see, edit settings. No, project configuration. My bad. So if I go ahead and change this, okay, that's not it. I don't want to select a different mesh. I just want to change the result. Oh, there it is. It's in my face. That's a 4K. A 4K is still, it still looks good, right? I'm, I mean, I'm pretty closely zoomed in, right? Not to mention that I'm not really adding that much detail. I don't have that, like my, my stamp probably wasn't that good of a detail. And my high poly, by the way, was low resolution for that. If you can, if you can see here, definitely low. Now, if I go to 128, is going to be pretty useless, right? And I go into 256, there's a much a bit of an improvement. And if I go to 512, there's a bit of an improvement. 1K, there you can see something. 2K, yeah, you got the shadows in. And then at 4K, obviously, you got the extra little bit of shadows. Unfortunately, like I said, uh, I didn't have enough polygons probably in my original high poly mesh, which only had, you know, 1.5 million. Uh, not to mention that, you know, this is a fairly... Like, uh, like no, not a lot of people will notice this. Not, not to mention, by the way, that this is a very, um, you don't usually have such extreme levels of uh, <laughs> detail. You know, this this is a very deep cut over here. I mean, I wasn't nego like uh, controlling the the depth of my uh, grime here, or you know how far away. Like this is ridiculous, right? Because because look at this distance over here. Right, this is this is a this is a lot of geometry I gotta flatten. Okay, uh, obviously you know it could still work, but it, it looks pretty garbage, right? I mean, look at this; it looks like it's big enough on the side, but it looks pretty garbage. Anyway, let's go ahead and turn on our little wood and see what happens. And uh, definitely, definitely problems over here. Uh, but you could say, well, you know what? This doesn't really make a good example because you need to paint over it. Yeah, sure, but I'm not gonna. I'm not about to paint again over it, and so that I can just prove a point. All right. What I want to show you is this. Let's go ahead. I'm just pressing C to uh, to go through the channels. Now notice what we've got. We still got the soft edges over here, which is shit. Then we got the hard edge over here. W look at this. I baked this with eight by eight anti-aliasing. All right. This is the subsampling. I was I sub I sampled this eight times. Notice at the at the jaggedness that I got. Notice how much jaggedness I have. This is a ridiculous amount of jaggedness for something like that, all right? You don't want that, right? You definitely don't want that. So uh, this is going to create some pretty bad artifacts in the long run once I go into my material here, right? Even if, it, if, I, if I add the wood, look at the wood. Like, look at the way the, way the light, that light works. By the way, you got to really be moving your light quite a lot here just to get a good idea but you can see that there's a massive a huge like like a hole in here and that is not good especially once you start it you know once you start uh, baking like uh, AO and it's just like what with the ambient occlusion this is gonna look really shit because it's gonna start occluding itself you don't want that all right now we could try you could argue that maybe this is a shitty uh, material right I'm gonna delete this I'm gonna add a um, let's add a walnut let's just add like a set like a there we go. Let's just add this. All right. This is like a like a substance. Now this is a smart material, right? This is a substance. Now we're talking. Now we're sucking diesel here. So let's go ahead and take a look at something. I don't know. Maybe we use the uh, the fibers. Maybe I don't know. Let's go ahead and say we want the triplanar projections on that on the fibers, 
and we want also a triplanar on the noise. Oh, wow, this is just a paint layer, so we need a grunge pass. Now, sharpen, where's my shit? Where is it, where is it, the base? Uh, we use the, the base's triplanar, because UV projection is garbage. All right, this sort of looks all right, right? You could say, but even so, you still got these problems here, and it's very annoying. All right, maybe we should uh, use another one. How about we use a, a, I don't know, like wood basic, like beach, right? Uh, now, uh, in this case, we should probably just add a triplanar here, but whatever we got, what do we got? Uh, the dirt bit, well, we use the veins. Let's just triplanar the veins. And maybe the fibers as well would be a good idea. And maybe the dirt. And the wood. And just everything. And it still doesn't look that good. All right. Um, I think that was a way to actually, uh, I forget, I, I ran into this problem ages, age, like, not ages, but a while ago. And I sorted it out, figured out how to, uh, you know, to triplanar everything. Uh, but I'm not sure how the, what the, the method was. Because I couldn't add a filter to it. So I don't know what exactly I did. I did something anyway to sort this out. But uh, at least, obviously, this is not a no, This is not the simplest solution anywhere over there. Uh, but as you can see, there is definitely a problem. Not only that, this is there's a problem at the bottom. Look at this highest sampling rate, eight by eight. This is the high. This is the best resolution I can get out of this. I baked for quite a while as well. All right. This is a small model, obviously. So you can imagine the shitty results you're gonna get. So now that uh, you see the you know the the utter crap that you can get, notice by the way that even though we have a hard edge over here, a hard edge right over here. Where is it? Oh, I didn't define one. Uh, this is the high. Do I have a hard edge over here? No, I don't. I only have a hard edge over here and a hard edge over here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that edge. That's pretty shitty as well, although it's not nearly as visible as the other one. That's because the sun is all the way up high. If it's coming from the top, if it was coming from the bottom, yeah, things would be much more different, especially if it hit it under the right angle, right? So I'm not going to go ahead and go into the viewer and just start changing the, um, you know, the position of it. But uh, you definitely don't want to be um, uh, having this kind of ridiculous setup like we have right now over here. Okay, so that's it for now, guys. Look, uh, my mouth is dead, and I really like if I, I look if I if I do this, I want to explain it like correctly. So if I start doing like UVing this, etc., it will take another probably forty minutes of explanation, and my mouth just is not made for this. All right. Oh yeah, look at this. We actually have a sharp edge at the top. How did I miss that? Let's take a look over here. What do we have? Oh, brilliant. Oh, absolutely brilliant. Jesus Christ. Oh, wait. Where's my normal? This is a normal. There we go. Why can't I get one to my real normal? There we go. So let's take a look. Well, this actually looks pretty good in terms of, uh, you know, there's no jaggedness or anything. This could be much worse. I'm actually surprised at the, uh, you know, at the integrity of this. But then again, you obviously see problems. If I say, if I use the European ash, or let's just say I'm going to use the, the the chestnut style as whatever, yeah, you will definitely see that it does look kind of meh. But it's not as, uh, well, this is pretty cool. This is actually pretty well, pretty easy to hide. But then again, you're not going to have a hard edge in the middle of a, you know, of a smooth object. All right. So this is not going to be such a devastating difference. But over here, it should be the most obvious, of course. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Yeah, like this is definitely the most obvious spot. Take a look at our little normal plus height. And yeah, well, this is with the wood. So if I disable the wood, this does not look very good at all, especially over here at the bottom. No, no, no. 
Mm -mm -mm. I don't like it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Look, it looks like some of them actually went through the other side. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is worse than I thought. Look, it does have problems. It's serviceable, of course. You could, you, you wouldn't have to use a lot of effort just to get something, you know, workable. Uh, but I'm gonna definitely do this next uh, next time where we go on to, um, you know, our low over here and just hide this up because this is just an embarrassing example. You know what? I'm gonna do this right now, but I'm not gonna show you what's gonna happen. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, UV map this guy. And then in the next video, we will actually, yeah. So I'm going to UV this right now. Okay, do this properly. I'm going to export this. And then in the next video, we will actually go over all of the substance painter. And just because we already know that this is the what's the correct way, you will see in the next video why it's the correct way. And then, uh, you know, I will introduce you to this whole setup over here, etc. So I'm just going to close this because I don't need it right now. And I will UV this guy, right? Uh, now, in Maya 2018, uh, it's best, and in general, it's always best to do it by hand, right? Manual, you can't beat manual, all right? So if you take a look at my current setup of the UVs, UVs are shit, right? Th these are my UVs. I really do not like these UVs. What I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna go into UVs and just delete my UVs, if I can grab my UVs. Delete my UVs. No UVs present as of yet now what i'm going to do next now notice that all of my um notice that all of my uh, uh edges are soft right i'm going to delete the history deleting the history completely and i'm going to go ahead and create a camera based projection and there it is so what is a camera based projection? Well, basically it says, well, I'm looking at this object and this is exactly how this object will be seen in the UVs. If we take a look here, that is generally the case, right? This is how I was looking at the object and this is how it is currently available to me. So what I'm gonna do is use my cutting tool over here. Let's say I select something like, oops, let's say I uh, go into my UV shell here, select the shell and then go into my 3D cut and sew tool. It's a pretty handy tool, by the way. I recommend you give it a shot. Well, here you got the tool, you know, uh, a good amount of tool settings, a steady stroke, etc. But let's go ahead into, let's say, the edge mode. And I can even start cutting over here using steady stroke, of course. And I could cut really bad, uh, really badly with it. I don't know. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. It's a very long steady stroke. You could just start cutting by hand like this, or you could just use, uh, you could just use a um, I could just double click on it, right? Or you could just shift it, right? Just shift for a particular cut. If you really want something like this, or you could just hold control to, uh, you know, sew th stuff together. So if I cut this, I can just sew this back together. All right, so it's a fairly fa fa fairly simple self-explanatory and very well visualized tool, all right? And after you, after I'm done with whatever it is I'm doing, I'm just gonna select all the shells and press D to unfold them. That's, that's all I'm gonna do, all right? Now, in order to work this properly, what I have devised is, at least this is my approach. You could, you could, yours could be different. I essentially think of this as defining my hard edges. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just define the edges that are hard, all right? So uh, let's go ahead and start doing this. I'm gonna cut over here once, and then I'm gonna cut over here once, right? These are two hard edges, right? They are hard, are they not? Then I'm gonna cut here once as well. I have a hard edge over here too. Uh, I'm not gonna bother with the top because I haven't really sorted it out, so I'm just gonna cut this off. Notice that I'm cutting, by the way, on a soft edge, right? That is not a problem. You do not need to have a UV, uh, you, do not you do not need to have a hard edge on a UV split, but you absolutely need to have a UV split on a hard edge. Remember that, very important, okay? Uh, I don't know, is this a hard edge over here? Is this a hard edge? This should be a hard edge. No. No, this isn't a hard edge, is it? Is it? Or is it not? I don't think this is. Ah, it's not a hard edge. Let's just say it's not a hard edge. Okay, then we've got another hard edge most likely here. Or is this going to be a soft edge? Let's leave it soft. I'm going to use this as a hard edge. Another hard. Another hard. So all these edges are hard. And 
I'm just going to say there's another UV split over here just for the sake of, ar of argument. Now, I've got a bunch of UV splits. You might say, oh, gee, man, like this is not really going to be looking like a good uh, unfold because notice that all of these things are circular. How the hell are you going to unfold that? And notice, if I decide to unfold this right now, by the way, all of this will look like pancakes. And uh, to illustrate my point, I'm going to go ahead and just use the UV shell selection method and I'm going to press D on it and I will basically wait for it to do its thing and you will quickly see that the unfold method is definitely uh, going to create some weird results right some very weird results let's go ahead and do this let's go ahead and check the results once they are done There's, there they are and now I've got a bunch of rings now look if I go ahead and take a look at the texel density of this, the Unfold 3D will do a really good job at providing me with, uh, you know, a, a good texel density. I think that's what it was. No, where's my texel density? There we go. Uh, Multicolor mode. No, I don't need that, but whatever. Right? So the texel density is good. Notice that basically very little of my mesh is, uh, you know, on a different resolution, meaning that every part of my mesh is going to be the, the exact same resolution. I think there was a way to have my stretching done. I'm still not used to this freaking menu uh where is my stretching and warping and all that crap no 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 uv distortion there you are so let's see how much distortion you got um not a lot actually fairly little Right now, you can tinker around with the tinker around with these and just get you know get them to a point where you like what you're seeing, right? Get to a good result over here, but at the end of the day, you could always just cut along, all right? And not like look, I'm not like nobody's gonna hold it against you if you decide to just leave it like this, all right? This is perfectly serviceable in most cases. Um, it's not the most efficient use of uh, you know of UV space because, like I said, look at how much texture space you're basically losing, right? And uh, you're not really you know holding these together. Maybe you could play around, cut and sew a couple of them, or you could just go ahead and simply grab, uh, you know, um, like uh, something like this, right? And just just completely just cut a thing along, right? There's your little cut, and there's another cut. Notice that I can do that. Oops. Notice that I can do that because I have see they're cut over here but they're not separate shells uh, I mean th there are no new shells that's because now I could just uh, go ahead and select these again uh, UV shell I'm gonna select these I'm gonna press D to unfold them now you see a much more different approach now obviously it's not going to do a perfect job. I'm going to have to straighten these out if I decided to do so, right? If I said, oh, gee, you know, I wanted to have them straight lines instead of uh, pancakes, but this, you know, this program, you know, the uh, the algorithm fucked up, so now I need to do it by hand, which is easy enough, right? There's plenty of tools. There's tools to straighten your, um, you know, even you can align them. Yeah, this is definitely not a good uh, uh, split, but, you know, it's serviceable, all right? It's serviceable, and I'm not, because I'm not going to use this, um, no. Nah, you know this object over here it'll be fine all right for what we're going to be doing there's no need to to go uh you know gung-ho about this so i'm just going to close this over here right now because all my seams are correct right i've got my seams where i want my b with the exception of these two right i need to remember that this and this is not what i need so i'm going to go ahead and select all these um i will select all these uh edges over here and I'm gonna simply soften harden using texture borders I'm gonna soften and harden them now obviously I don't want every bit to be soft and hardened so I'm gonna go ahead and remove these edges I'm gonna say I want this to be softened now I want this if this, this actually starts to work uh, I want this and this to be softened and I want this whole loop to be softened and there we go. Now I have my perfect setup over here based based exactly on what cuts I've made. And this will work for me flawlessly. However, there's still one tiny bit that, you know, you need to do if you really want to do, if you really want to have like a good result, good end, a good end result, is you need to bevel these things. Now you can always just grab the whole thing and just bevel it. What's it doing? It's auto-saving? 
Dude, wait, no. What? Oh, whatever. Look, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to delete the history on this. And I'm going to go ahead and bevel this guy. Now, I'm going to bevel the whole thing. And let's just say I'm going to bevel this by, by this much. And this is how I'm going to create my little bevel. So this is a legit type of thing. However, this created a lot of geometry problems. And I could play around with it, obviously. But it's much easier to simply select whatever I want. Because beveling is much like smoothing in some in, in most cases all right so let's go ahead and grab this and notice i'm going to bevel by pressing control b and i'm going to use a fraction of two okay like two segments i, go, I want one on one side and one on the, uh, and one on the other side i don't want a set a three segment thing because then the hard edge over here becomes a soft edge right i, I like my seam is not on the same bit right and uh, it has to be like in a, at the same number, right? So if I go ahead and just leave this at one, this is gonna create like this one bit, which is fine, but I wanna have my two, so I have a good split, right, between these two. Now for some fucked up reason, this is actually also hard. And that's all right, depends on the fraction, you know, but once you got your fraction to be something like, something like this, something like this, this should give it a really good, this you should really get a good bake out of this 0 0.33 all right you should get a good bake out of this uh and you should be doing this at pretty much all these um you know edges so i'm going to select both of these edges i'm going to bevel them and i'm going to basically drop it down to 0 0.33 or somewhere about there i'm not even looking at what i'm doing right now i'm just looking at the number you got my two segments over here so this should be easy enough to work with notice over here that it this was um correctly noted right so this is over here this is a soft edge and soft edge soft edge. now these are hard edges for some fucked up reason these are goddamn hard edges it's so fucking annoying all right look in this case you're just gonna have to bite the bullet and soften the goddamn edges yourself all right you soften on one side and then you soften on the other side all right that's one where else did you fuck it up? Oh, there we go. This soft and this soft. Okay, there we go. Now this is soft enough. Now we need to go ahead and do the same thing over here. Bevel this. 0 0.033. Now this did it rightly, but then this is soft now. I need it to be hard. So you see there's problems sometimes with the bevel, particularly right now for some reason. Okay, this is beveled now. Sorry, uh, this is hard now, is it? Okay, good, where it's hard. Bevel this guy. Yeah, this guy, this should be easy enough for uh, Maya to work with. 133. Look, you don't have to be the same anyway. Sometimes 133 is more than enough. Sometimes it's not enough. I just want it to stay at the same um, number here. Is this hard now? It is fucking hard. Do I have a UV seam here then? I do have a UV seam, do I? So I can go crazy here, man. No, I don't. All right, then if I don't, this has to stay soft. Either that or need to, to cut the UVs again. Should I Should I cut them again? Oh, I might as well. Might as well cut them again. Let's go ahead and select the UV shell and the uh, this mode over here. Well, UV shell. And then uh, cut and sew, and then this, and then like that. And uh, yeah, this should be legit. And I'm just going to unfold this again. It's going to take a while, but hey, better than nothing, right? Damn, I really need to get some water here for these freaking tutorials. Because this is taking way longer than I expected, you know? Uh, but yeah. Once this thing unfolds, my uh, suffering will be over. And I'll see you next time when we actually start doing, you know, doing some stuff. And when I've actually had some water and some rest or something so that my mouth can uh, moisturize again. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our final result. And um, the, yeah, like you would really want to straighten these out, right? You're going to grab this and just select a particular a particular let's say like this one right and just go into these toolkits the toolkit over here to um you know to um like go to align and snap for example or unfold 
and you want to like optimize this stuff or maybe straighten the UVs, like I don't know, straighten the shell. Will this do it for me? Like I'm doing my ass. I'm cutting right now. <laughs> ah, geez, I'm I'm still in the freaking uh, tool, am I? Yeah, I'm still in the tool. Let's go into UV shell. There we go. So let's say let's say I select this shell, right, or this shell, and just straight try to straighten this out. Will it straighten it for me? Yeah, this is not good. I think I need I just need to straighten across the U or the V. Yeah, it's been a while. Like I need to use this one more time because it's been a while since I've been bothering with this stuff. But as there, there is, I, I think there is one tool over here that's specific, basically very easy to straighten this stuff out, uh, such as this, you know, or this, for example. You just should straighten it out. Why would you not straighten this out? Oh, there it is. Now this one, for some reason, this one's straightened out. So you need to rotate this around, right? Or this one around. You got to rotate this like I don't know, like this much. And uh, you gotta arrange it. Obviously, most of these it's best. It's best to arrange this stuff. Uh, let's say I'm gonna. Let's just do this right now as it is. We're gonna arrange these in ridiculous fashion. Okay, fuck it. Let's just straighten some of these out as well. All right, that's not what we want. I need to change the degrees here. I believe. Okay, I just gave up on it. Forget about it. You know, um, I I can't be bothered right now with this. I think it can straighten this out as well. And there we go. And I need to keep it inside. Preferably inside my uh, my UV space here, so like this, right? Yeah, keep your stuff inside the UV space. Never forget that. All right. Uh, by the way, yeah, you can stack these. Uh, maybe I should talk about this in the other video, but look, point is, if you stack these, once you paint on this one, whatever you paint on this one will show up on this one. This way, you can save resolution, right? You got these two on top of each other, meaning that you know you don't need space for one another, right? You can have one giant donut, and you know even though they're overlapping, you can have a lot more detail on one, but this is a very specialized use for the UVs, especially when they're stacked. Usually used for symmetrical, um, objects okay right now that this is uh, a hard edge i can just close this and i can grab this and i can bevel it and i'll bevel it to 133 134 and and god damn you harden okay i don't know what my last action was but apparently it was not hard. All right, there we go. This is hard and this is soft and everything is great. Now this is properly beveled and properly uh, UV'd and we've got everything that we would need to get a good enough bake, okay? Ah, God damn it, might as well freaking do it right now and just go over the rest of the stuff tomorrow when we, okay. All right, let's just do the whole thing. Let's just do the whole thing, Jesus Christ. All right, I'm going to delete the history, and of course, I'm going to export the selection, and I'm going to export it to test, and I'm going to say smoothing groups. I'm going to triangulate this guy. Uh, binary, axis Z, blah, 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 blah. Nothing of that is included. Great, 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 great. Now, this is top low. Low. Just that's all. Uh, what is it now? Smoothing groups. Are oh, you joking? I really need to triangulate this guy. Okay, uh, I am going to have to triangulate this guy by hand. Always forget that. Now I'm going to delete the history on this dude. Or maybe I shouldn't. No, let's not do it. Uh, I'm going to export selection and not triangulate because my guess is the smooth did the smoothing groups groups fuck up? Did they? Oh no, they're good. Oh, this is still good. Yeah, this is good. It's still legit, I believe. Yeah, it's still hard edge, hard edge, hard edge. This right here is a hard edge. All these edges are hard. Great. Okay. Very good. Now, did we have a crease on this uh, on this side on our high high poly? Did that thing have a crease? Yeah, good luck finding that. Oh, it does have a crease. Okay, well then at least all right. Well, that's great. We got the crease. All right. So what I'm going to do is essentially uh, 
export this guy right now. Select this, export selection. Uh, no need to triangulate, so uh, you can re-export over here into the top low. And it is exported. Now let's go ahead and start up our Substance Painter again so that I can show you the difference that this makes. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got the steam, we got the everything, right? So I'm going to go ahead and select my mesh right now, which is my top low. I'm going to open this up. It's going to load. Now immediately, this is a much cleaner result, don't you think? Like there is, there is literally, apart from the low amount of uh, polygons on the roundness here and over here, like I, I probably need a couple of more, like maybe 50 or 60 extra polygons. This is looking much better. Even over here, this isn't that bad. I mean, for now. Now, when I bake it, this is still going to look like shit. You know, but whatever. Let's look at the UVs. At the UVs. Uh, like, this is what you would want, essentially, most of the time, whenever you have your UVs like this. You want straight lines. Almost always better in almost every case. But look, I, I, can't be, I couldn't be bothered with straightening these out, so might as well have them like that. Uh, if we go ahead and take a look at our light, well, there's no immediate problems that I can see. We have a set over here. Yeah, this looks pretty good. It's smooth enough. Let's make a texture. Let's use the AK. Actually, let's use no anti-aliasing. We use the top light. Let's see what's going to happen without anti-aliasing and simply good UVs. Well, good, relatively speaking, because I didn't exactly put my best effort in it, but, uh, you know, you, you, get, you get the idea, right? Let's bake it. And this should be like an instant, like, lightning fast bake. Well, let's see what we've got here. We do have problems over here. We've got ab aberrations. We've got... Over here, it's fine, though. This is a really good bake, right? So there's no problems over here. Uh, some issues, though, very little. Over here, some issues. Uh, nothing like a good AA not going to fix. This over here, yeah, we had another problem, and this is basically because of the bevel. Now that we've beveled it, uh, this thing gets, uh, you know, uh, shot up really easy. So maybe we shouldn't have beveled them that close. Uh, you know, it depends on basically what you want to do. Bevels are not necessary all the time. It depends on, like I said, the bake you're getting to. In this case, I think my bevels were a little bit too aggressive and uh, they got a little bit too close to my uh, targets over here. So maybe not the best idea. Yeah, same thing at the bottom. Now this is actually, AA, AA is not gonna fix that for the simple, for the, Jesus Christ, focus. For the simple reason that, and this is a much uh, more, you know, exaggerated build over here. If we take a look, my UVs. Yeah, this is not looking good at all, especially due to the bevels being such a pain in the ass. Uh, so I'm going to have to, you know, I would have to delete these bevels now if I really wanted to. Uh, that's why, by the way, you, you usually duplicate stuff before you bevel it. I just didn't do it because I really, even like no matter the result, I would have uh, uh, just ignored it. All right. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and just maybe maybe rebake them and see what's going to happen if I increase the anti-aliasing. Now, usually in this case, by the way, when you have a problem with the... Uh, when you got a problem with your uh, baking distance over here, uh, sorry, with your uh, bevels, usually a baking distance could fix it, right? Currently it's 0 0.1, but if you drop it down to 0 0.05, maybe even lower than that, maybe you could get a better result. So let's just rebake this and see what happens. I'm gonna just keep my, uh, just keep my eye over here and see what's gonna happen. I'm gonna bake both of these textures again and see if I can maybe salvage whatever I've just fucked up by beveling so close to the edge. Usually it's best to bevel these edges though. Though again, it depends on what kind of results you're getting, right? Obviously, if I didn't bevel them, maybe I could get much better results. Okay, let's see what we got. Yeah, this did not improve one bit. Yeah, funny thing is, at the end of this freaking video, I screwed it up on my own. That's just brilliant. You know? Okay, I'm not going to screw it up with the worm. I promise you that. All right.
because uh, kind of burnt out, burnt out for the day. Let's use uh, let's use some wood just to see what's the difference here. Yeah, this looks like shit. Try planner should fix it though. Yeah, it does. So sort of, it's sort of good. It's it's not it's not bad. Like it's not really bad. There's no like no huge artifacts here, but the bevel is really bad. Like I really screwed up on the bevel here. You can you can clearly see this over here. Um, so that's not what you want, right? And you, you the UVs are even though they're good, we do have some issues here. Like what the hell is that? Where did that come from? I don't remember that. I don't remember these UVs being like that. If I select my object as well, it would be nice. Oh Jesus, they are like that. Oh, okay. I need to unfold. I need to unfold this again. Oh great. Now I, I actually I actually have this triangulated as well. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to uh, retriangulate re requadrangulate this which is a legit way of doing stuff okay what if I just quadrangulate this oh this is even gonna turn this into quads well this is this is pretty nice um, yeah bevels are still here and they will kind of fuck it up unfortunately I just can't be bothered deleting these right now uh, so yeah I'm sorry guys but uh, yeah, this is I kind of missed that bit up, <laughs> you know. Uh, by the way, you can snap stuff using Shift here, right? Just, just saying, if you rotate something by mistake, you just snap it down. Um, yeah, kind of overkill, really. <laughs> this should not have happened. I'm sorry, guys. Well, you know, everybody makes mistakes. Even uh, an amazing person such as myself, one of the most brilliant beings in the universe anyway i'll see you guys next time when we actually go through this stuff and you know prepare we will prepare the worm either that or i will just create another another example properly done example and i will use that properly done example to um illustrate you know the uh, availabilities of the tool sets here and what these menus are doing right Okay, guys, I'll see you guys next time when we are actually starting our little uh, thingy. Bye-bye.